Hello everyone and welcome to this course. My name is Rahul and I will be your instructor in this entire web development bootcamp. So what is this bootcamp about? It's this bootcamp is about full stack web development and we would be starting everything from scratch. By scratch, I mean someone who has never ever touched a computer or a computer system would be able to know how to write full uh, blown uh, web application at the end. And I mean it, we would be touching everything from ground up, right from your core technologies and important concepts. So first two lectures today and tomorrow are more, more focused towards the, uh, the, the theoretical part of what software is, what hardware is, what is a computer system, what is software development life cycle and other concepts. So let me quickly share my screen so that I'll uh, we'll, we'll go through what we would be studying in this lecture. Uh, everyone able to view my screen? Just give me a yes in chat. Perfect. So I've listed uh, very broadly the, uh, the name of topics that we would be going through. Every topic we would cover in great detail. These two lectures today and tomorrow we would be covering these topics. So what, what uh, are uh, the topics that we would be covering? Let's go through them one by one. Number one, what is a computer system? In general, what is a computer system? What it all includes? Number two, what would be your hardware and software? How hardware is different? How software is different? How they are connected together? Then diving deep into what is a software? Because we as web developers would be dealing with softwares. Those could be your code editing softwares. Those could be your design softwares and other things. Then what is an app? Eventually we all would be building either web pages or applications. We need to understand what app means. What are different types of mobile applications these days we can build. And finally, we would be covering the steps, the stages involved in developing a very nice software right from the idea generation to final delivery to the customer and even post delivery what steps are taken care of to make sure the bug the bugs errors or advancements are happening time to time the bugs are rectified the advancements are happening time to time so we would be covering in those phases what are those phases your analysis phase Analysis phase is basically your idea generation phase where the idea comes from. Then design phase when you just give a very virtual uh, layout to your idea on pen and paper or some design software. Then development phase. This is where actual coding happens. Your, uh, you can be a front end developer, you can be a back end developer, you can be a full stack developer and all these three types of developers are working together to create a nice software. Then comes your quality assurance phase where the testing happens. You have developed a product, then you undergo multiple types of tests on it so that you can check your product is working fine as per the set standards. After your product passes the parameter, the testing parameters, you release it in the market. You either give it to the client or you release it. If it's your own product, you release it on your Play Store or Apple Store, your application. And from there, users can uh, download it and use it. And post that, there is maintenance phase. After getting user feedback or if there are some technology advancements happening, you want to upgrade your application post release. At that point of time, this maintenance phase comes. So this is a very broad overview that we would be covering in this lecture. So let's go with the first topic. The first topic is computer application. So what is computer application? So computer application is a system of, I would say, basic and functional uh, combination of hardware and software. This, uh, this setup with it needs everything, everything, it includes everything that is needed to implement computing reference. So if I have to write it uh, in a very simple words, let's say, if I have to write it in a very simple words, I would say it's functional. It's basic and complete setup where user can 
provide an input and get an output. Suppose you want to make some calculations. You open a software calculator, you enter some details and you get output on your screen. So that is what all is happening over here. A combination of user, hardware and software together is called a computer system. So now computer system can also be called as integrated form of different components. So we can also call it as integrated form. It's integrated of three basic components, hardware, software, and user. And each different component works for a specific purpose. You have different hardwares for different purposes. You have different softwares for different purposes. So that is what a computer system is called. So in general, just remember what is computer system? Combination of different integrated components designed to fulfill a specific purpose. They can be used to process data. They can be used to store files. And what these components are? Hardware, software, and a user. So user, uh, we as users are using these devices. Now comes what is hardware and software. We would be studying that. But in general, computer system, very simple, integrated, basic, functional set, up, set of components which are designed to fulfill user's request. So this is a very basic definition of a computer system that we need to remember. These terms, why, are, why am I telling these terms? Because later on, we would be using these terms. We would be, uh, you would be talking to your senior developers in these terms. So at that point of time, you need to have an understanding what these terms actually mean. Now, every computer system has an ability to either receive input and ability to process data. So let's see. So what are the basic functions of computer system? So we, we understood that a computer system comprises of hardware, software, and user. Now, every computer system is able to receive user input, is able to process data, and is able to create information for storage and output. So just see over here. From keyboard, you provide input. From the monitor screen, you get the output. Here, your request is being processed. And if something you want to store, it is getting stored over here. If something needs to be processed from internal memory, it gets processed through this internal memory. So four basic functions, remember. Input, this is provided by user. Processing internal hardwares of your computer system that analysis, that analyze the input received. They analyze the input received. And upon proper analysis, output is provided by, the, by some hardware. Some hardware, some uh, output device is giving you some output. For instance, your monitor screen, your speakers, your printers, they're providing you output. And last, storage functionality. If you want to store something, your computer has inbuilt memory as well as external storages as well. So all of these capabilities, all of these capabilities in a computer system become possible of only two major components. What are those two major components? Your hardware and software. Now let's understand what hardware and software is. What is computer hardware and software? Let's try to break them uh, one by one. What is hardware? What is software? We'll, we'll try to understand them one by one. Now hardware and software are two terms that you've probably heard of at some point or another. The odds are high that you are using both of them on daily basis. You are using them whether it's with your smartphone, whether it's your personal computers, laptops, or any other devices in which you put in some request and you get some output. Let's take a deeper look at what these two things are and why they are very important. Let's first see hardware. So first we would cover the hardware aspect and second we would cover the software aspect. Now what is hardware? Let's understand through these two images. So first I'll, I'll let you know what hardware is and then I'll explain these images as well. So hardware is any element of computer that is physical, that you can touch. This can include your monitor, keyboard. This can be inside devices of your CPU, like microchips and hard drives. 
So anything that you see over here, let me show. So anything that you see, for instance, your keyboards, your mouse, your monitors, webcams, speakers, headphones, printer, any device that is connected, this scanner, this USB drives, the CPU, your disk drives, anything that is connected to your computer, anything that is connected to your computer system, peripheral device, which you can touch, which you can see is called a hardware. So those are physical components of computer. We can see and touch the hardware. So we often uh, say we have a CPU, but inside the CPU, we have so many things. RAM, your video cards, sound cards, motherboards, your CD drives, DVD drives, hard disk drives, power supplies. All these things are hardware. Everything inside a computer which you can touch is called a hardware. So it is divided into four broad categories. So if I have to say it, hardware is divided into four broad categories. Number one, it could be your input device. So let's say input device. So if we have to figure out in this image, what input devices do we have? We have this, you'd see this input being written over here, keyboard, your mouse, your scanner, your webcam, all these blue boxes that you see, all these blue boxes, which are pointing to a particular device are your input devices. In this image, we can see webcam, keyboard, mouse, scanners, even your monitors are your, uh, sorry, not monitors. These are input devices. Uh, monitor is an output device. So let's, uh, let, let's go to the second category. Second category is output device. We'll understand the difference between them. Output device, you see all these red boxes over here, all these monitors, speakers, printers, all these are your output devices. Then comes your processing devices. Processing. What is processing? When you put in some request, machine needs to understand what you're requesting. If you open a calculator and uh, add two numbers, machine need to understand that, okay, a, an arithmetic operation is happening. An addition uh, arithmetic operation is being processed. Which numbers are entered? What result I have to produce? All that technical stuff, the understanding stuff done by the machine is inside this processing unit. This processing unit is understanding what needs to be done, which memory needs to be targeted, which uh, particular folder you're trying to access in your disk drive. It is happening over here. This is processing. And then comes your storage device. Storage devices like your hard disk drives, USB flash drives, uh, your uh, the pen drives and everything. These are your storage devices. So four categories we uh, understand input, output, your processing and storage input in which you give some input. You, you want to enter something. You want to send in some details like scanner. You provide in some paper and that uh, scanner scans those images. On the other hand, printer can print those images. That is an output device in which machine responds to you. Disk drives are your storage devices and processing to process the request or to access the right area of the memory happens in your processing unit. So any doubts in hardware, any doubts in the four categories of hardware, any doubts, just put it in chat, any doubts in hardware so far, computer system and hardware. Okay. So let's move on to the next part. Next part is our software. Very important. Now, what is software? So let's see what is software. Software is anything that tells hardware what to do. So it's like instruction manual, I would say. Instruction manual. Instruction manual for what? For instance, you are driving a car. Now you have a, an automatic car and you press the start button, the car starts. You're pressing a hardware. Something you can touch is hardware. You press it, it starts. But pressing that button sends some instructions to the engine what to do those instructions are happening through a software behind it. So what is software? It's an instruction manual for hardware, which tells it what to do. It can include your computer programs and applications. It can be your video games, photo editors, 
web browsers. These are just few examples I'm taking. So software, if we have to say in uh, more simple words, it would be a set of instructions. Let's say set of instructions or set of programs that operate, that are used to operate a hardware like computers and execute specific tasks. And uh, without softwares, computer would almost be useless. Suppose you have a simple computer, nothing installed in it. What would you do with it? Today, we are able to get in touch with each other due to a software called Zoom. So if we do not have uh, these uh, live calling softwares, how would we be able to get in touch with each other? There is no way. So softwares make hardware uh, functional. So for example, web browser is a software application that you that allows you to access web. Operating system is a software program that serves an interface between other applications and hardware. Suppose there is no operating system installed on your laptop, no Windows, no Mac OS, nothing being installed. You have been handed just a piece of uh, laptop with no operating system. You won't be able to access other functionalities. So just to give a brief example of uh, types of software could be your uh, Microsoft Office software. This Nero uh, was, uh, I don't know if you guys remember, this Nero software was used to write uh, your empty disks. If you wanted to write songs, if you wanted to print, uh, sorry, write your empty disks, this Nero was being used. Internet Explorer is a software. Recycle Bin is a software. This Adobe is a software. Paint, media players, uh, your emails, browsers. So these are softwares that make your hardware functional. So in this image, we can see two friends talking. Let's say it's A and B. So A is asking, which operating system are you conversant in? Which operating system you know? Which, which one are you familiar? Which spreadsheet software are you using? Which design software are you using? So all these things, all these things that run on a hardware is called a software. So it, it, it has a wide range. Software has a wide range. We would be covering types of software in detail. But just understand software is like this. So if I have to draw an image, I would draw something like this. So let's say I'm marking it as S. S means software and this is hardware. So my hardware is the inner box. And to make it functional, I have to put some software on it. And then only a user, this user can access this hardware functionality. Suppose you want to view a movie on a laptop screen. A simple screen would not be able to do it. You need some media player or you need some software to stream that movie. So that is what software and hardware are doing. So any questions and gen general questions regarding what is software before we move ahead and understand how they are working together? Uh, what would happen if we remove one? What would happen if we remove the other one? Uh, any questions regarding what is software? If I have to briefly explain it, set of instructions running on a hardware, they make the hardware functional. A computer system can only work if you have right softwares installed. Okay, perfect. So now let's see hardware and software working together. What would happen if we remove one with a very nice example? So. Uh, hardware and software are different from each other, but they also need one another in order to function. Let's look at an example of this using a smartphone. In this case, only the smartphone would be the hardware. So this is our hardware. No, no software being installed, just a simple smartphone. And the softwares would be the operating system and other applications that we use. Those can be for your messaging, video streaming, listening to music, browsing web, etc. So these are your softwares. These are your softwares. This can range from two categories. One, your operating systems. It could be your Windows, Mac OS or, or Apple iOS or your Android and other applications, the general application, Zoom application, WhatsApp and other applications that we daily use. Now, what would happen if we take only hardware and no software? 
So if we were, uh, now, if we were to take away the software, we would just have a dead phone in our hands. It would not be able to make calls. We would not be able to send text messages. We would not be able to go online. Why? Because it is not receiving any instructions. So why it is not working? We would have a dead phone. I'm just writing over here. Why? No instructions being provided. No instructions being provided to the piece of hardware. That's why it won't be able to perform anything for us. On the other hand, if we have only software and no hardware, you have written some piece of code, but there is no actual device on which you can run that software. Okay, allow me just one moment. Let me uh, remove the annotation. Yeah. So now, what would happen if we have only software and no hardware? So what's happening over here? We have removed the physical device. We have only some written code somewhere. Now that code is meant to be run on a particular device. We need, uh, we, we want, suppose you have a manual. You have a, 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 a car driving manual, but you do not have a car. How would you be able to implement those instructions? You need a physical car to implement those instructions. You need a laptop to implement the instructions regarding operating system. So if all we have are programs and just a bunch of instructions and no device to which these instructions must be given, then that is useless. Those software would be useless. We do not have any physical device that would take the instructions from our software and provide us with the output. So even with this, I would say, let's say, uh, let's have, no output over here we have set of instructions now this this has been fulfilled but no output why because no physical device no physical device on which we can implement those instructions we have instructions but no device so now why are the, these two important we we I hope we are understanding why these two are important together. The big picture here is that hardware always needs a software to tell what to do. So only software can tell a hardware what to do. And software also needs a hardware in order to act out its directions. Software has list of steps, but in order to perform those steps, software needs to have a physical device. When you combine both of these, you can do all sorts of things, whether you are using your smartphone, computer, or any other type of device. Now, technology can change. It can continue to evolve. Even after 100 years, the combination of hardware and software would be serving as a foundation steps. So if we have to mark this, I would say this is a complete setup. Setup. If you're using a, a computer, it is, uh, against this uh, smartphone, you would call a computer system or the, we can say it functional. This is functional. And we get input output relationship successful input output successful. We are providing some input, we are getting the output and that is only possible because both are working together, software and hardware. So uh, someone is asking is uh, writing software possible without hardware? So I, I would say no, because uh, to provide some input, you need hardware. So from the very, very uh, core step, core, uh, very starting step, both are needed. Suppose you want to write a line of code on a system. You're writing with the hardware. So it's not possible. It was just a hypothetical situation that you have set of instructions without a hardware. So they are not possible. That's right. So Wahid is absolutely right. Without computer, you can't write any software. In that case, combination of both are necessary because if you're writing something, you're accessing a hardware. You're not accessing a software. Something you can touch physically is a, is a hardware. Something that you cannot touch physically is a software. And both working together uh, form a complete functional setup. Any questions related to hardware and software relationship before we move on to the types of software.
any doubts related to what is hardware, what is software and relationship between them. Perfect. So let's move on to the next topic. The next topic is types of software. Very important topic. We need to understand it very clearly because we as developers would be working either to create softwares, either to uh, we would be working on different softwares that are used to debug softwares and many other things. So do pay attention to this part uh, the most types of software. So now software can be broadly classified into two major and two minor categories. What are those two major categories? Two major categories are a system software and application software. These two minor categories I have placed only for us to understand them in a better way because we would be dealing with programming softwares and driver softwares uh, at some point of time. But broadly, two categories are either system software and application software. And all other softwares lie under these categories. So let's uh, let's understand them one by one. So first we understand what software is. It's a computer program that provides instructions and uh, data to execute user commands. Input can be processed with the help of a software instruction and we get output through a hardware. Simple. Four uh, categories I've divided, two major, two minor. First is your system software. Second is application. These are two major ones. Minor are your programming software and driver software. We would be studying them in detail. First, I would like to take this application software. Let's understand this application software first. Now, what is application software? Let's let's understand these terms. These lines that I've written will will uh, go through them one by one. We'll not understand them as a whole. We will go through them one by one. So let's go through it first. What is application software? Let's understand the term first. So we often call it as an app. Often application software is called as an app. These types of software are end user programs. These are productive end user programs that help you perform tasks. So now what is this end user program? Okay. This end user program, something that the final customer is using. For instance, you want to listen to a music, you open a Spotify. Spotify is application software. This is end user. The final consumer is using. And now some of the examples, your Microsoft Excel, Photoshop, Skype, and others. So what does Microsoft Excel help you do? It's a spreadsheet software, which you can use to present and analyze data. So different categories are there, which we would be studying over here. But for example, you have uh, the end user program. If you want to understand the end user program, user can put in some data and make charts in Microsoft Excel. User want to edit some image, he or she can use Photoshop. User wants to connect across teams or user want to connect across uh, the globe with someone, they can use this Skype software. So Skype online communication application. So it's a communication category. Photoshop is an editing application software. It helps you visually enhance your images. This is what end user program means, something which final user can directly use. First category of software that we are studying, application software, end user programs. These are end user uh, designed for the end user. Then comes they are installed and operated on computer based on the user requirements. What does this mean? User requirement. Now, if you do not need Photoshop, you won't install it. If you do not need Skype, you won't install it. So these application software are based on the requirement. If you need it, if you need that functionality, you would install it. For instance, you need navigation, you may install Google Maps. You need some browser, you may install either Chrome, Safari or Firefox. So anything. It depends on the type of user requirement. Someone may need it. Someone might not need it. They are not mandatory. They are designed to serve a very specific purpose. Each application is designed to serve a very specific purpose. For instance, you won't uh, edit your images through Microsoft Excel. You would use a very specific software for it. So these are 
a very uh, i would say purpose specific let's write it purpose specific the purpose has been defined so in those six stages of software development the first stage comes over here what is the purpose of your idea who which user would you target do you want to target music industry do you want to target uh, or social media industry so this is purpose specific and one user might need it the other user might not need it so the number of such apps keep on increasing with technical advances and these have been evolving over the time so i've categorized few apps that we that usually we use every day for instance for your word processing software so these tools are used to create word sheets your documents most common is microsoft word or notepad one of the other uh, one we started is spreadsheet software this is used to compute con quantitative data if you want to compute a data you want to make a chart you want to make some uh, invoices and other things you might use spreadsheet softwares microsoft excel your database software something if uh, if you want to store some data if you want to uh, uh, authenticate some information we use ms access oracle filemaker pro there are many other softwares as well then your application suits what are these these are collection of related programs for instance your microsoft office contains outlook contains ms word ms office or oh, sorry ms excel and other other softwares as well then comes your multimedia softwares your media players real players that these tools are used for audio video images and other type of content then internet browsers is a software your google chrome safari other things then comes your email programs gmail outlook yahoo apple mail and other things so these are different categories main point to note over here is application softwares are purpose specific they are downloaded as per user requirement one may need it one might not need it and there are plenty of softwares as per the need word editing your spreadsheets your uh, media content internet browsers and so on so this was application software first category under your softwares first major category any any questions in this one what is application software so whenever you want to develop an application software remember your purpose purpose your purpose needs to be very much clearly defined okay so any questions in this one before we move ahead to the next one that is system software let's move on to the next one the next part is system software now what is system software now system software helps the user hardware and application software to interact and function together this first very point just remember it's a combination of uh, all this user hardware and an application software remember the application software is coming over here we studied the application software now for that application software to interact with the uh, correct hardware on our device we need system software now these type of softwares allow an environment they are kind of platform for other softwares to run so how can we draw it like this so for instance the box we draw earlier the bigger box was your software right now this could be your system software this could be your hardware and this could be your application software for an application to reach the hardware they has to go through a system software system software acts as an uh, as a platform if we see this image this image this one just notice this one let me change the color of pen this operating system is a system software and this application software if it needs to get in touch with the hardware it needs a platform that platform is your system software it lies in between your application software and hardware 
So when a user wants something that it, it gets in touch with the application software, application software gets in touch with the operating system, operating system gets in touch with the hardware. And then the same process happens. Hardware provides the output and then further output is being processed over here and user sees the output. So this is the basic uh, structure, application software, top layer, system software, bottom layer, and both of these are lying above the hardware. So these are very much essential for managing the whole computer system. For instance, uh, the example is your operating system. If you remove the operating system from a, from a device, no application would run. If you try to run uh, WhatsApp on, on a dead phone or, or a phone which does not have Android or any operating system on it, you won't be able to run it. Application ne software needs something to get in touch with the hardware. And that something is system software. So it, it is the intermediate layer between application and your hardware. And it always runs in the background. It's not something that you can disconnect it and uh, keep on using some other functionalities. It keeps on running in the background. So when you first power up your computer, now if your system software, it is your system software that initially gets loaded into the memory. So first, first, for instance, you power up your laptop, your operating system gets loaded into the memory. So unlike application software, system softwares are not used by end users directly. You're not using operating system directly. You're not extracting some functionality. They're running at the background. They're running as an intermediary layer on which the application software is running. You want to access something, you get in touch with the application software. Because of this reason, the system softwares are called low level softwares. Because in, in a software hierarchy, system software is over here. And then application software is over here. So it's a low level software lies in between application and your hardware. Now examples of system software few I've listed over here, the operating systems are an example of your system software. Now, all your computers, devices, they run on operating system. It could be a desktop, laptop, smartphone, tablets, few list of uh, operating systems that I have listed over here are the common ones, Microsoft Windows, Mac for Apple devices. Similarly, for smartphones, we have Apple iOS, Google Android, Windows Phone, uh, operating systems and other other as well. So any doubts, uh, any confusion between application software and system software, just understand the hierarchy where they are lying. So any confusion in this one, anyone, any doubts, just put it in chat. Okay. So let's uh, move ahead. The uh, next two minor categories were your programming software and driver software. So they are part of your system software, remember. So the next two minor categories that I'm going to touch are a part of your system software. So let's see. So now we would be studying system software only and under that two categories, there are various categories. Okay. What is, uh, we have a question in chat. What is same point in system and application? So, uh, could you please explain it to me a little bit more? Uh, same point. What is same point? What do you mean by same point? Uh, do you want a brief about uh, system and application or uh, the connect? Okay. Uh, where are they interacting? Do you want to mean where the system and uh, Application software interacting. So, 
if uh, i'll just give you a brief uh, about system and application once again very brief uh, is voice breaking for everyone just let me know if it's clear just say it's clear perfect so i'll give you a very brief once again so very easy to understand system and your uh, application software then we'll move ahead so you see this uh, operating system let me clear this one up we'll understand from this example okay so let's say you want to open youtube now youtube is your application software so what type of application layer it is this these application layers is a very in depth topic of uh, the software i don't want to go into that it's uh, a complete in depth detail i would uh, suggest you uh, study it on it on google just google it you would get everything over there regarding different layers as well but right now there is no point touching in those uh, different layers of software so i'll just uh, give you a brief uh, before moving ahead this operating system this is your system software so this youtube cannot exist this application this is an application this youtube application cannot exist on itself if it is there and it needs to get in touch with the hardware it has to go through an operating system and that layer is system software just remember system software is intermediate layer it lies between an application and hardware you are not directly interacting with it you open a laptop you just press power button the first thing that loads on your computer is your system software the operating system gets loaded up it shows you all kind of applications that you have installed so those applications have been installed on top of system software and for those applications to get in touch with the hardware they have to go through the system software so very simple so uh, if you remove the system software if you remove the operating system for instance you remove android out of your phone now can you use any application on it you cannot because now your the connection between your application and hardware has been broken there was a link that was communicating with application as well as with the hardware that link that communicating link is system software something that takes the user input and understands it sends the instruction to the hardware and further then takes the output from the hardware figures it out sends the in, uh, converts it into the right format so that user can understand what machine is trying to communicate and sends back to application software and application software further enhances it and shows uh, provides it as an output so system software is the communicating link it lies at the bottom layer of the software above that an application is installed and if you want to view a movie you open a media application software for instance mx player or any media player you click on that you uh, select some movie you play it that is only happening because now your output device your screen laptop screen was able to communicate with your media player and the link between their communication goes through the system software those are running in the background those system softwares keep your hardware alive so if you delete all the applications you would still able to open a laptop the fresh laptop that you get from a showroom uh, or or a tech shop you open it there are no applications installed suppose there are no pre installed applications as well only the operating system then you would be able to see something on the screen but if you only install the applications you won't be able to do it because the life of your hardware only comes because of the system software the operating systems and we are going to study further two categories which would help us understand more 
uh, under system software. There are many other categories as well. One, you must be seeing your utility softwares like your antiviruses, disk cleanup. Those are system softwares that help your system keep aligned to its correct standards. The, the other two we are going to study are programming software and drivers, your data drivers. So let's let's go through them and let's see if we have some more, uh, if we get more understanding how system softwares are working. So let's see the next uh, uh, minor category. This is your programming software and it is a part of system software. Remember, it's not a standalone software. Now the other two categories that we are going to study fall under system software. Number one is your programming software. Let's see it. Okay. Yeah, this one. Now, what is programming software? We have been hearing this word programming again and again and again, but sometimes we fail to understand the right meaning behind it. Now, what is programming software? Programming software, which are not used by general users, not a simple, anyone is not using that software. Those are specifically used either by developers or programmers. Someone who wants to write some code, someone who wants to debug an application, someone who wants to test a software. Suppose you created an application, you created a product, you want to test that product. Uh, for instance, you uh, created, let's say, a movie application, and you want to see that movie application is buffering or not. What, how much lag am I experiencing? There must be some tests written, and those tests are written using these programming softwares. Okay, let's see. So programming softwares are basically special kind of softwares which are designed for a specific category of users, I would say. And what is that category? That category, allow me just one moment, guys. So not used by general users. What is that special category I'm talking about? Is developers. We would be using programming softwares. We would be, uh, or you could be, those could be coders as well, different language platforms. Now these are used. What is the functionality? Used to write, develop, test, and debug other softwares. So someone who is working in a software development company, these kind of softwares make their life so much easier. Now, these uh, programming softwares are called translator programs. They use translator programs. Now, what are these translator programs? You enter something into your computer. Now, how does computer understand your language? You are writing something in English. The computer was not designed to understand English. Computer had its own set of language, which we call as binary language. Computer only understand zeros and ones. So these programs are used to translate the information, the, the information that you have written into machine readable form, into something that computer can understand. So there are two categories that I've taken up, compiler and interpreter. So very briefly, we would understand them. Compiler is when you've written all the code. Suppose you have 100 lines of code. You've written it. Now, once you are done, then compiler would convert into the right format and tell the machine, okay, this was written by the user. And in turn, machine will provide the output, compiler would convert it into human readable form and provide it to us. When all the lines of code together converted into machine readable form or vice versa, that type of translation is called compilation. On the other hand, we have interpretation or interpreter. What is interpreter? Completely opposite. We <coughs> Sorry. We wrote first line of code. Interpreter will tell, okay, first line means this to the machine. We wrote second line of code. Interpreter will tell, okay, second line means this. When your uh, code is being converted into machine readable form line by line, one after another, that is called the job of interpreter. Some softwares use compilation technologies, some softwares are interpreters, and, and some software use both. So 
any any doubts in this compiler and interpreter like very basic we have covered compilation when all your code gets converted into machine readable form something that our system can understand and then all the code is further converted into the human readable form the the output the output provided by the by the machine that is compilation and when the same thing happens line by line first line gets converted then second line gets converted then third line gets converted and so on that is interpretation so that uh, is compile yeah uh, you remember we had a, a very sh one or two minutes short video on this that was a very nice dialogue. video yes. yes an interpreter if you would uh, like to share it uh, do you have that link atalash i do not have that link with me uh, let me quickly take a look into it. Yeah, you can continue. I'll find it. Because that was a very wonderful video. Yeah, I'll 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 find it and share it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, meantime, let's understand what type of different programming softwares are there. So they depend from language to language. Some languages are uh, interpret. Uh, they are compilation languages, interpretation languages, or some are using both. So different programming uh, softwares have been provided. For instance, this Eclipse that you see, this is used by Java developers. The Coda software is being used by uh, language editor for Mac. This is a programming language editor used by Mac uh, users. This Notepad++ is specific open source editor for Windows. So if I have to write, this is Java based. Now this is Apple based this uh, coda this notepad is for windows and the vs code it's a multi platform cross platform this is you this can be used by the windows or uh, mac linux any any uh, any kind of uh, operating system so windows apple linux all these are operating systems and they are using this programming software the one that we would be using in our uh, this entire course is this VS Code, very wonderful software editor, or sorry, code editor, which has multiple functionalities, shortcuts, uh, so many helpful extensions that make writing code so much easier, very easier. So, okay, we do have link with us. Let me open it and I'll uh, play it right away. Hey guys, uh, is uh, is the video visible? Yes. Okay, I'll share the screen and uh, let's quickly view the video. Uh, I'll share the sound story. Let me go back to the video part. Yes. When you land in the world of computers with their strange convoluted machine language, it's a bit like landing on another planet whose inhabitants speak an equally strange, convoluted alien language. Getting a mechanic on planet Gobbledygook to repair your spaceship would present the same sort of problem that you have when you want to get a computer to do something. Everything you say has to be translated. Uh, do we need subtitles with it? Just give me a yes or no while... Okay. Yes, please. Okay, I'll put it. Yeah, so I'll quickly play it once again. You land in the world of computers with their strange convoluted machine language. It's a bit like landing on another planet whose inhabitants speak an equally strange convoluted alien language. Getting a mechanic on planet Gobbledygook to repair your spaceship would present the same sort of problem that you have when you want to get a computer to do something. Everything you say has to be translated. And you have a choice between two different sorts of translator. One of them is called an interpreter, and the other is called a compiler. Let's suppose that you've previously written out your list of instructions for the repair of your spaceship. And suppose that you choose the interpreter to do the translating. He reads your first instruction, 
open lid of rocket engine. Translates this into gobbledygook and immediately passes it on to the mechanic who executes the instruction. Then the interpreter reads your second instruction. Remove spark plug. Translates this into gobbledygook and passes it on to the mechanic who executes it. And so on and so forth. Now, notice how the interpreter works. He stays with you all the time, and he translates each of your instructions immediately, one by one. This is a rather slow process, because the mechanic has to wait while each instruction is being translated. But, on the other hand, it does give you a chance to correct your mistakes as you go along. If the mechanic removes the wrong spark plug, for instance, you'll see this happen right away and you'll be able to change your instruction accordingly. Compare this with the way the second sort of translator, the compiler, goes about his work. He takes your complete list of instructions and without further ado, translates the whole lot straight into gobbledygook. He then hands them back to you and goes away, leaving you all on your own. All this has taken some time. But from now on, things will go very fast. You hand the complete list of gobbledygook to the mechanic, and he executes them all in one go. Bang, bang, bang. There's no waiting about this time. But there's one disadvantage to this, of course. If there was a mistake in your instructions, it's too late now. This analogy comes very close to the way the interpreter and compiler translator programs actually work with computers. An interpreter runs slowly, starts right away, and lets you see how things are going. Whereas a compiler takes extra preparation time before your program can run, but then lets it run very quickly and efficiently. To help you remember the difference between an interpreter and a compiler, look at the words themselves. Inter means between. The interpreter is always between your program and the computer, and it translates line by line. To compile, on the other hand, means to pile together. A compiler piles together your entire program and translates the whole thing all at once. Which one you use on Planet Gobbledygook is entirely up to you. OTT platforms are the bus these days. But do you know how top streaming platform? Nice. So, any doubts that we have? Okay, let's go back to our presentation. So, any doubts regarding interpreter and compiler? Very nicely explained in the video. Any questions you have before we move ahead? And uh, someone asked, what about a Sublime? Sublime is one of the another text editors, but for this course, I would prefer VS Code because it has been widely used and very easy to understand for everyone as well. It's a personal preference. So if someone wants to go with Sublime and they're very comfortable coding with it, uh, no issues. But for this bootcamp, I would, uh, I, I would suggest uh, try using uh, VS Code and you would love it. So there are different things regarding IDE and programming software. A programming software can have so many things, so many things. It could have uh, interpreter, compiler, as we started. But the uh, the IDE integrated development environment is specifically designed to run code, to debug code, to test code. So programming software can have multiple things, which can have other things uh, apart from your editors but IDE is part of the programming software. So uh, can we choose the type of translator, the uh, interpreter and compiler, the, the languages are uh, already written. So like uh, Python is uh, specifically written for some uh, functionality, Java and so on. So they, ha they, they are already being written into uh, this. Some are compilation languages, some are interpreter languages. So as per the need, you can select the language. 
which one if you need uh, compilation facilities you can choose a language which is a compilation language if you need something which uh, in which you need interpretation facility you can uh, choose a language which is interpreter language so it you can choose the language and uh, what type of application layer is uh, are you uh, so different uh, you do, uh, okay application layer so do you want to get into different uh, layers of uh, the software layers or so just give me a brief idea about it uh, do you want to refer about your osi models like open system interconnection models so that's a very uh, that's a topic of uh, like that's an in depth topic i would say we would not need to go into that uh, so system software is intermediate layer between the two application and hardware so something if your application wants to get in touch with the hardware it's the communicating link do not get confused with the layers of your uh, your open system uh, model osi model layers do not confuse it with that it's just a reference it's just like a communicating link it lies between your application and hardware if your application wants to communicate with the hardware it has to go through the go through the uh, go through the system software so do not confuse it with the order of layers that we have in the model so it has nothing to do with that just a link between the two okay so let's move ahead let's see the next topic which is our driver softwares so what is a driver software you must have seen it multiple times you must have used printers your speakers computer sorry your keyboards mouse and everything earlier days in earlier days we used to get a separate cd if you remember a compact disc driver disc what whenever you, we used to buy something uh, a device that could be connected to a computer it used to a company it used to get accompanied with a cd that cd was driver software so it's a part of system software it controls the connected device so now if you if you want to control this printer how would you control it in this particular uh, hardware in this particular uh, your laptop you have operating system and within operating system there are drivers drivers which target specific hardwares specific hardwares i would say so if you have a printer driver drivers installed to manage printers those drivers are specifically designed to target a hardware and that hardware is your printer so whenever you connect your printer your laptop recognizes okay your printer has been connected it gives you a pop up how are you able to get that information that is because of those drivers those drivers are able to recognize okay something related to my functionality has been attached so for instance you attach some usb flash drive you get a pop up you attach a speaker you get a pop up from your sound card new audio device detected so this is very uh, specific hardware specific and they are operating system specific as well so for instance uh, different uh, driver software for mac different driver software for your windows so you attach an hp printer and you go to the hp printer website they have different options to download do you want to download for windows do you want to download for mac do you want to download for linux so they are operator operating system specific so if we just go through these points type of system software controls the device connected they are uh, the intermediate between operating system and hardware so you see so there are multiple layers of your system software itself like system software it has multiple layers one could be a driver layer and this driver and this is your hardware if this is your hardware this driver is getting connected with the hardware so different layers of system software are getting connected to respective functionalities so uh, overall operating system so this could be your operating system now operating system wants to get in touch with this hardware it has to go through this driver software so suppose we have an application printing application over here now printing application wanted to get in touch with my printer we know this is an application 
Now it has to go through operating system and now operating system further has to go through the drivers associated with it. So if we just draw it uh, in a clear manner over here, this is your application. This is your operating system. This is your driver software. And this is your hardware. So we uh, provided a command print through an app printing app. It wants to get in touch with our printer. So if we have printer over here, it wants to get in touch with that. So now how do, how, how does everything happens? First, it goes to operating system. Okay. Operating system was the middle link between the two. Now printing system wants to get in touch with the hardware. It first needs to get in touch with the drivers associated with it and drivers will form a link with the hardware. So drivers are hardware specific. Your uh, printers would have specific drivers. Your speakers would have specific drivers. Your keyboard mouse would have specific drivers and they are operating system specific as well. Apple have different drivers for printer. Windows have different drivers for printers and they have been provided by the company. Earlier, we used to get a CD along with the device. Now they have been provided online on their official websites from which you can download it and different versions of drivers as well. So any doubts so far between your system software, application software, programming software and driver software. So let's see an image. The next image would uh, make it more clear. So this is a user wants to access some application, gets in touch with the application software. And now for application software to provide the output through the respective hardware, it needs to go through the operating system. This is your system software. And further, there are many layers over here, like driver layers, programming layers, utility layers, through which specific hardware is targeted. For instance, your windows want to get in touch with the printer. It would check the driver associated with it and further driver would find the path and go to this printer. So what is driver software? Driver software targets the specific hardware. How does your computer know that? Okay, I have to get in touch with printer. How does your windows operating system know get in touch with printer? It has certain set of instructions. Those set of instructions are provided by drivers associated with that hardware. So for instance, you want to get in touch with printer. There are specific drivers. There are specific set of instructions that tell the windows the path to reach the driver to, to sorry, to reach the hardware. So when you click on a printing software, now you have reached the operating system layer. Now operating system would further find the instructions. Okay, which hardware, which hardware is it talking about? Those instructions are written in the dri device drivers. How is our operating system able to recognize that a new device has been connected? So when we connect a set of headphones, uh, we get a pop-up, okay, new headphones connected. When we connect an external drive, we get a pop-up that okay new external drive connected those are uh, those instructions those pop-ups are possible only because there are certain drivers already installed in your system so if we have to explain it i would uh, draw it something like this so let's say this is your driver this is your hardware this is your operating system operating system and this is your application. And this entire thing is your system software. Let's draw it like this. This is your system software. And this is your application software. And this, is, this whole part is your uh, software uh, bucket. Now, user gets in touch with the app. App wants to get in touch with the hardware. It goes to the system software. System software takes it to the operating system. Operating system finds the right driver for which the user is uh, requesting for. Okay, user wants to print something. Operating system will find printing drivers. Those drivers will take us to the printer and will get the output. We are providing an input over here and through further steps, we are reaching the right hardware. How are we reaching? First, targeting the operating system. Then operating system finding the right driver and then going to the further hardware.
so uh, i hope this uh, makes it more clear just understand the hierarchy if you want to access a hardware you need to first reach to the operating system then then to the drivers uh, driver uh, software and then to the hardware so all these drivers operating systems programming are a part of system software remember they are happening in less than fraction of second like milliseconds they are happening in milliseconds so everything is part of system software everything is happening inside so it's just to channelize to define clear paths so if i'll just uh, erase everything so just see this you want to go to microsoft word now you want to display the text user clicks this now it first goes to the operating system and now operating system wants to find the right path so that it can provide the output of this so there are certain drivers being written in this path okay which would take me to this particular uh, uh, monitor screen so that i can view this so if i want to view netflix movie i would i would need to access three or four drivers first is your sound card if i'm using a headphone a monitor as well if i'm using speakers so all these drivers would be working together for me and i would be getting output of all these three through my screen headphone speakers and any other driver associated with it if it's needed so does this make uh, sense like why drivers are placed they are just to provide you the right path so that operating system can target the correct hardware so usually it comes built in for your keyboards printers nowadays it comes built in earlier we used to have a cd or some other ways to download it okay so let's uh, let's see we have uh, 10 minutes left let's quickly wrap up the next session the next session is what is an application let's see this and then we would cover the rest of the part tomorrow now what is an application we have seen that software is composed of two parts system software and application software usually we call up uh, an application as an app now all apps are a part of software but all softwares are not part of an application what does this mean so let's let's remove this yeah so application is a part of software it is not a software so whenever you're clicking on an app it is a part of software we studied two major categories so software is the bigger bucket and within that two boxes are there system software and application software so all applications are a form of software but all softwares is not an application because we have another category that is system software this is application software this is an app this is an app they are a part of software but all softwares are not applications okay understood this point that all softwares are not applications because there is system software another category major category and all 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 applications are software because it's a part of uh, the uh, software hierarchy so now app is most frequently used to refer mobile applications or piece of softwares so there are different types of apps so is it not clear should i explain it a little bit more okay so let's uh, let me explain this one let's say so let's explain it once okay let's yeah so let's see let's this is your software now there are two categories that we studied system and application now what does this line mean all apps are a form of software now app what is app app is this application software now this application is a part of software so all applications are software remember all applications are software but 
all softwares as not an application. Can we call this as an application? No, because we have the system software separate category under this. So software comprises of two parts, your system software and application software. So therefore we can say application softwares are a software, but all softwares are not application because there are system softwares as well. So system software makes software a broader category apart from just having applications in it. So that's a very simple line, nothing to get confused about it. All apps are a form of software. Why? Because see this box. That's right. That's absolutely right. Applications can't work without system software, but system software can. That's absolutely right. Because system software are standalone softwares. They run in the background. They keep your hardware alive. And application softwares need a connecting link. The system software, they need a connecting link to get in touch with the hardware. So if we put this in bigger box like this, your application is a part of software and software has two categories. That's what this line means. Software is broader category. Application is one category of software. I hope now it's a little bit more clear. You need not memorize everything. You know, the beauty of this line is you need not memorize anything. You just have a very fine understanding. And then whenever you need it, just use Google all the time. Just use it, explore it, search it every time. Go to it, search. Any doubts, search. You will get so many beautiful articles, so many images, so many uh, examples that would bring more clarity. You need not memorize it. Just have a very fine understanding. Okay. So we'll just have a very fine understanding so that later on, when we are touching core technologies, we, we know what's happening behind. Why are we doing what we are doing? Okay. So let's move on to the next slide, which is what are different types of applications? So I would be discussing just the headings today. The details we would be covering tomorrow along with various stages of your software development life cycle. So there are two categories. First is your desktop application and second is your mobile application. Self-explanatory desktop applications, the applications that you use on your laptops, on your desktops. This thing that we see over here, this is called responsiveness. Nowadays, same website is being used on tablet. Same website is being used on mobile phone. This is called responsive websites. The website which is able to adjust itself as per the changing resolution of the device. So this desktop has some other resolution. This tablet has some other resolution and this has some other resolution. And if a website is able, a desktop application or a website, this could be an application or a website is able to change itself as per the resolution of a device. It's called a responsive website or responsive applications. And how we are doing it, we are writing a programming software. We are using a programming software over your operating systems to create the output. So this HTML I've written just to signify that we are using a programming language so that we are able to create beautiful screens needed as per the project requirements. This was your desktop application, something that is specifically designed for desktop, but these days it is made responsive right from scratch or right from start. And the other one is your mobile applications. The, the, the applications that are solely for mobile, which are not used on desktops, but particularly for mobiles. So we would be studying types of mobile applications and desktop applications uh, tomorrow in detail. Uh, we have five minutes. Let's have a uh, uh, question and answer uh, uh, this uh, session. If you have any questions, feel free to put it on chat. If you want to share anything, any, any suggestions also feel free, free to put it on chat. So this was for today's session. Tomorrow we would be covering desktop applications, mobile applications, and your software development lifecycle.